Here's Brody Brazil. You know, in covering the Oakland A's like I had been for so many years, I thought two seasons ago when they got to only 60 wins, that was a really bad season. 102 losses, triple digits, that's not great, but it got worse. Last year, only 50 wins, meaning 112 total defeats. Okay, now enter into the conversation the Chicago White Sox of this season, 2024. They'll be lucky to get to 40 wins. And that would translate to 122 total losses, surpassing the 1962 New York Mets and their 120 defeats for the most losing baseball season in modern times. Yeah, the White Sox here in 2024, again, lucky to get to 40 wins. Almost like hard to do bad. It's hard to be that bad. And this is on the field record, but it's also off the field stuff, fan attendance. And the point of this video is to explain things might get a lot worse in 2025 if that's even possible. At least the team is not necessarily lining things up to instantly make things better. They're just hoping things get better. This is reporting from Bob Nightingale of USA Today. Bob, I love the glamour shot, by the way. That's a great pose right there. The Chicago White Sox, as he penned in USA Today, who should break baseball's all-time record of 120 losses this week, plan to cut payroll. By the way, they have not gotten to that point yet. Plan to cut payroll in 2025 after sustaining substantial losses in revenue during this horrific season. So you have a bad team and your fans didn't show up. I mean, that's part of a business, right? You have a bad restaurant, customers don't show up, and then you're going to keep competing by cutting and hopefully that makes it better. Uh, And attendance has been low all year. I mean, it started this way. There was a doubleheader in April against the Royals. I mean, I know the weather's bad. It looks cold, but oh my goodness, where is everybody? I saw somebody, somebody put this on social that the... The White Sox had 17 fans, realistically, uh, at the end of uh, August in a game in, in August. I I don't know if that was true. It was announced, I think, much greater than that. But they're obviously lying about attendance. If you go back into their box scores and uh, look at the total number, I know tickets sold versus people in their seats are two different things. But I don't even I think they're fabricating at this point. I mean, the eyes can see what the eyes can see. So how did they get here? Right, 2021, this was a team that got to the playoffs. In fact, in 20, they were also in the playoffs. No fans at any stadiums that year. But 93 and 69, they lost in the ALDS. They were averaging shy of 20,000 fans per game at uh, guaranteed rate field. $115 million payroll. So, okay, they're, they're on the up, right? 2022, now they're starting to pay their team. About $50 million more, $167 million payroll. The average fan attendance goes up, but they finish with a precise 500 record 81 and 81. Last year, 61 wins, 101 losses. That's not good. Triple digits, 20,000 fans. It gets cut fan wise. So that's going from 24 to 20 is a big deal. And then 20 to 17, I'll get into that in just a second. That's a really rough uh, a decrease in average fan attendance. Their payroll, though, goes down from 167 to 140. And here in 2024, as I recently uh, panned out their record, projecting to be about 40 and 122. So by the time you're watching this, I don't know what their exact record is, but when I'm setting this up, that's what the pace uh, that's the pace they're on as of me doing this video. But 17,039 fans, 130 million. By the way, I should also state this, like still comparing the Chicago White Sox, not win loss wise, but payroll wise and attendance wise, they're still like three times the payroll, well, twice the payroll, and easily twice the attendance of what the Oakland A's had been doing for a lot of years. And uh, we'll get into that that drama and that sub story maybe in a different video. But according to ESPN with the attendance woes here, the White Sox have dropped from 24th to 27th in average attendance across baseball, going from 21,000 to 17,000 per game. That's the fourth largest drop-off this season. And the only other teams who have seen their average attendance fall by a larger amount are the Mets, the Cardinals, and the Blue Jays, which all of those other teams are way higher on the attendance scale. Like them missing a few thousand, they still get at least 11,000 more fans on average attendance-wise per game. So the White Sox were already low, and then they had one of the most significant drop-offs from year to year, from last year to the average this year. This according to MLB trade rumors 
Sox.com. Chris Getz is the general manager of the White Sox. So how are they going to handle this? Well, in terms of this year, quote, you try and make the best of it and think it's an opportunity to embrace the situation. And I think it's an opportunity to embrace the situation that we're in, end quote. He said that to ESPN. And then on an NBC Sports Chicago game broadcast, he didn't say it like precisely or directly, but I I think this paints enough of the picture for us. We're not going to be working heavy in free agency, end quote, in this upcoming offseason. So that would correspond with Bob Nightingale's report that this team is going to make cuts. Well, how do they make cuts from 100 and... Uh, $40 million to wherever they're going to go, sub $100 million. The highest paid player on the team, Yohan Moncada, is making $24.8 million this season. Next year, the White Sox only have to pay him $5 million in a buyout. More impending free agents include Clevenger, $3 million, Soroka, $3 million, and Flexen, $1.75. The team could also non-tender Nicky Lopez, who's making four point three. million in his second season of arbitration, and Andrew Vaughn, who's making 3.25 in his first year of arbitration. All of this coming to us from MLBTradeRumors.com. There's also this list of players who are gone and off the team, and pretty soon they'll be off the payroll, like the White Sox in some way, shape, or form recovering some of their salary. So that goes to part of the expense of what they were paying. $148.8 million, according to Roster Resource, is the total overall payroll this year. Active players, inactive players, injured players, traded away players. 148 is is going to be their final tab estimated by the end of this season. And lining up for next year, they're only on the hook right now for $35.5 million in commitments. Now, I mean, even a team like the A's started this current season in the $60 million range. So there's probably 25, 30 to play with to get you to 65 or so. But this shows you how fast this team, who, by the way, is also asking for a billion dollars in public subsidies for that new ballpark at the 78 on the South Loop. They're going to go from this to maybe double this, 70, but that's cutting 148 more than in half. Shows you how easy they could do this, and they're on pace to do this. Yeah, they're seeking that stadium. Guaranteed rate field where they play now, it opened in 91. Unfortunately, it missed the trend of the retro ballparks. The White Sox say there's no room to grow in the current site. They want to move to the South Loop. They just did that pop-up field. By the way, I did a video on that. You should check it out. Uh, There's probably a link to it in the comments section below. Uh, The White Sox are trying to show off this new project in field, and they would love some public subsidies to make it happen. That's a great site right there. But at the same time, don't you want to do good business as a baseball team? Don't you want to field the proper team? They're asking for public funds. Chicago White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf, I think this was from the Chicago Sun-Times, desires a new stadium for his club, one largely built at public expense, but Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker may not be inclined to give him what he wants, as the Chicago Sun-Times notes. Quote, I start out really reluctant unless a case is made that the investment yields a long-term return for taxpayers that we can justify in some way. I just haven't seen it yet. In the White Sox case, Reinsdorf is seeking, at that point, I think this might have been from earlier this calendar year, $1.7 billion in direct public investment plus tax kickbacks. As Field of Schemes' is, Neil DeMoss notes, by the way, friend of the channel, Neil has been on here, that would make it the largest stadium subsidy in United States history. It's also a situation in Chicago it's a two-team major league market. And we know the A's are departing the Bay Area for Sacramento and then maybe potentially Las Vegas or anywhere else. But it's one of those things where baseball doesn't really have a lot of sympathy or empathy or any good feelings for these two-team markets. This is what Rob Manfred, commissioner of baseball, said about the A's departure. First of all, we do have a major league team in the Bay Area. It's not like there's an, an, there's not an available option. The Giants are obviously still playing there. End quote. So my point is, do you see how all this is lining up here? The White Sox, they want a new ballpark. They're trying to get public money. Their attendance is bad. They're trying to cut payroll. Oh, here, let's just get, these aren't even takeaways. This is an, uh, this is kind of an Oakland A's, Chicago White Sox similarities checklist. And I'm not saying that in a great way if you're a White Sox fan. Is the team struggling on the field? Yes. Is the attendance going way down because of it? Yes. Are they cutting payroll drastically? Yes. Asking for public funding for a ballpark? Yes. Talk of relocation. That's been out there. 
Nashville has been mentioned. Is it a two-team market where baseball is more likely to say, well, we're already serving Chicago? Yes, it is. So you add all of that up, and I say things are going to get worse in 2025. I mean, how could you possibly lose more than f- or win fewer than 40 games next year? Um, I mean, it like might get worse on and off the field for the White Sox and their fans. I don't like to see that. I hate doing videos like this, but I just want to call it out as early as I see it here. And maybe we'll, we'll reflect on this video down the road and see how things shook out. You made it here to the end of this one. I really appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That greatly helps me, this video, and this channel. I would like that. I would also love it, though, if you just take one quick second, go down there, make sure you are subscribing to this channel. That way I definitely get to see you back here next time.